Good morning, church. It's Thursday morning. Take your Bibles and go to 1 John in chapter number 4. Uh, this is going to be our last person that we're going to be looking at. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Antichrist. We've been looking at people of the Bible. We're going to come to the final person that's going to have a, a massive influence upon the world, and we know him as the Antichrist, or in the book of Revelation, he's known as the Beast. And I want you to notice in chapter 4 of 1 John that John is warning the Christians, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But this you know, that the Spirit of God and every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is God, is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Now there's our term, the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, John talks about that you've heard of one who is coming as the Antichrist. My assumption is, is that Jesus talked about the last days and things that were going to happen in the last days. Paul had talked about the coming of an Antichrist. Later on, this same John who wrote 1 John will give uh, a revelation or will receive a revelation from God and give the name of this Antichrist, the beast that is to come. He is more than a spirit, because he said, but he talks about there being more spirits out in the world. There are many spirits that have gone out into the world, but there is one spirit that has been moving around since the, the early days. Uh, we saw it in Nimrod. We saw it in a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. We saw it in Pharaoh. We, we see it in many people who think they're going to rule the world, all the way down to our generations, when Hitlers and people like him want to rule the world. That is, the spirit of the Antichrist is in that individual. They have such an insatiable desire to control. They have such an, an, an Antichrist. They are opposed to Christ in so many ways. They do not believe that Jesus came in the flesh, that is, God came in the flesh to be the Savior of the world. They reject those things, and they are, if you will, at least the, the Antichrist who is to come, they're the right hand of the serpent, the right hand of the devil. And this Antichrist is revealed in the book of Revelation chapter 6 as the one who's coming riding on a white horse. That is, he's coming to conquer the world, but he does it without firing a shot. He takes over the entire world. And as you read through the book of Revelation, and we're not going to do that uh, right now, uh, this study that we're doing right now today is going to lead into, we're going to be looking at signs of the end times. Uh, but this Antichrist is going to set up a one world government. This government is going to rule for about three and a half years, and then he is going to force himself into, as the emperor, if you will, the Caesar, the, the one world leader. And he is going to set apart any government at all, and he is going to take over as a one world ruler. He's going to set up a one world economy wherein you can't buy or sell without having his mark, his approval, and acknowledging him as supreme. Uh, and then he's going to set up a one world religion. For three and a half years, that religion will be kind of a conglomerate of many religions and just everybody kind of getting along. Of course, that's going to last about three and a half years. And then he will cast off all religion, he will make people bow down and worship him. He will uh, rule the world and he will be a destroyer as the devil always is. The devil comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. And this is his right hand man. And he is going to come on the scene and, and, and in a short, short period of time, seven year period of time, he literally will bring the entire world to his knees. There will be such avid destruction upon the world. And then Jesus will be revealed. The Antichrist will turn all of his efforts uh, away from what he was doing to destroy Israel to prevent the coming of the Messiah. And uh, at that point, Jesus will come. The 
false prophet that works with the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be caught. They will not get a trial. Uh, Jesus will cast them straight into the abyss. Uh, they will never, ever come out. They get no trial. They get no, uh, there's no day that they have uh, a judgment made. That is their judgment. And they will be cast in the lake of fire forever and ever. That is what happens to those who are opposed to Jesus Christ. But this is a fascinating individual who will play a major part in events in the world very, very soon. So tomorrow we're going to begin talking about a different subject. We'll be talking about what are the signs of the second coming? What can we look to to say that is different from every other generation that is happening in our generation that says that Scripture is being fulfilled and therefore the coming of Messiah, the true Christ, is, is to be soon. Well, I hope you'll come back and we'll enjoy those together. Let's pray. Father, we do recognize that there is a coming one who's going to bring destruction. But we thank you as this scripture we read a moment ago says, greater is he who lives in us than he who lives in the world. That Father, through faith, we can overcome all things. That the one who is to come, who seems to be mighty in the eyes of others, is just simply a tool for your destruction. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.